The neurons in a feed-forward neural network are arranged in discrete layers. An input layer, some number of hidden layers, and an output layer. Information is passed, or fed forward, from one layer to the next. Each neuron is connected to every neuron in the layer before it. The strength of the connection between any two neurons is given by a numeric weight value. The value passed to a neuron is calculated by taking all the values of the neurons in the previous layer, multiplying them by the appropriate weights, and summing the results. The sum, plus an extra offset known as the bias, is passed as the input to a function, known as the transfer function, for that layer. The output from this function is the value passed to the neuron. This process is repeated for all the neurons in the layer, and then again for the next layer. The weights, biases, and transfer functions therefore determine how inputs are transformed into outputs. Feed-forward networks are useful for predictive supervised learning problems, where the goal is to map a given set of inputs to a given set of outputs. For regression problems, the goal is to predict a continuous response value based on the values of n predictor variables. An appropriate feed-forward network for this has n input neurons and a single output neuron. Each input neuron takes the value of a predictor variable. The value of the output neuron is the network's predicted value of the response. For classification problems, an appropriate network again has n input neurons, one for each predictor variable. But instead of a single output neuron, a classification network has an output neuron for each response class. Typically, the final transfer function is chosen to map values to the range 0 to 1. The value of each output neuron is then interpreted as the degree to which the network predicts that the observation comes from the corresponding response class. Training a feed-forward network involves adjusting the network parameters, the weights and biases, to match the training data. This can be achieved by applying an optimization routine that minimizes prediction error. However, with so many parameters that can be adjusted, it is easy to drive the prediction error all the way to a minimum, overfitting the data in the process. One way to avoid this is to stop iterating on the optimization routine before reaching the local minimum. But how do we know when to stop? One way is to use a training and validation partition of data during the training phase. The training data is used to update the parameters by applying the minimization routine. But after each iteration, the current network's performance is evaluated on the validation data. Once the validation error starts increasing, the network is no longer generalizing well, which is a sign that we've started to overfit. We can use this as a trigger to stop training. For this reason, we often split the data into three groups when training a feed-forward network. A training set, a validation set to use during the training phase, and a final test set to use after training is complete to evaluate the trained network.